Welcome everyone. I'm delighted and grateful that you made the time to be here today. This session is the second in a series of eight planned events on the use of hypnotic techniques in coaching. The technique that I'm going to be talking about tonight, although I will be talking about this in the context of coaching, this is actually a technique that you can use your, for yourself outside of coaching or even just use as a creative thinking technique if you wanted to. So this will be useful regardless on whether you are a coach or not. The session this, this evening will be a very, very much a meditative session. And this exercise is just to allow us to slow and calm the mind away from the hustle and bustle of everyday busyness. And I'm going to ask you to embrace, if you will, the deeper peace and calm of connection with your unconscious mind. It's a simple technique which you can use to slow down and even create a little trance state. And it is something that your unconscious already know how to do and that is how to breathe and we all know how to breathe unconsciously and we don't even have to think about it we just know it happens when we notice it so here's a simple technique and you can decide to close your eyes now or later whichever is best for you, because you always know what's best for you. But you also know that real adventures and dreams often happen in the middle of a restful night, away from reality, when your imagination runs free from the chains of the ordinary world. So dream with me a while and close your eyes now knowing you will find an adventure in your mind today. And all you have to do is look with the eyes of the imagination, the pictures, thoughts, and feelings that it brings inside and breathe. Breathe with me. We're going to breathe in on my four counts and then we are going to breathe out for eight counts. So in a moment, I'm going to start counting and I really hope you will join in breathing with me. So let's start. Breathe in, two, three, four, out, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and in two, three, four, out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and in two, three, four, out two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, and in two, three, four, out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and rest. Keeping your eyes closed until I ask you to come back, but not yet. And just resume breathing in a comfortable way. And while you are adapting to your usual way of breathing, just notice how you feel now. That's right. The stillness that the breath creates is a light trance within which we can replenish that which we most need, breath. 
And anytime you want to create space for yourself, breathe. It may be a while since you've been on a real adventure of the imagination. And today, I invite you to access parts of your creativity that hide behind the locked door of your unconscious mind. The unconscious knows everything, hears everything, makes connections you would never consciously make. And it is the smartest, most sensitive, and most creative part of your mind. And it's so easy to let all that power out. Your journey today will be as light or as profoundly profound as you allow yourself permission to embrace your unconscious world. All you have to do is accept what resonates for you and let whatever happens, happen. Eyes closed, relaxed, calm and quiet. It is simple and enjoyable. And once you do it, you'll want to do it again and again. In the words of Max Strom, who says, some doors only open from the inside, like the doors to the unconscious mind. Finding that a hypnotic trance is a state, a state of mind caused by cognitive loops where a thought an image, a sound, an intentional action happens in such a way to result in an altered cognitive awareness. And in your mind's eye, imagine, if you will, that there is a way, your way, of traveling in time. And you may even want to imagine a small machine of a design that you know well in front of you. And in this moment, imagine that this machine has the power to transport you anywhere in time you want to be, but especially into the future, because that is the direction we will travel to today. A time that has not happened yet, yet it will happen today and again when it is time, but not yet, here and now. And take another deep breath in and out. Enjoy this feeling, this feeling of tranquility and peace with a little edge of excitement for the future you will see. Enjoy it for one more moment. And when you are ready, come back to the year and now. Open your eyes, stretch your body. Welcome. In part two of our series today, we will explore a hypnotic technique that we can use to create the future and a path to that future. Timeline travel allows us to travel to an expected event or a goal that occurs in the future and project how we want to have that play out and then seed our imagination with all of the tools, resources, and actions we need to allow that event or goal to play out as we want it. I also want to just remind you of what we will do in our next session in the next week. We will talk about image streaming and image streaming is a tool for creatively solving personal or professional problems or challenges through extending our awareness from the purely rational thinking mind in this present moment 
to also include our wider unconscious, somatic and intuitive faculties. And by doing this, we can connect to our imagination and the vast resources of our unconscious experience so that we can create possibilities and options for our coaching clients. Now, image streaming was originally developed as a technique for accelerated learning, but it's also had promising results in increasing measured intelligence. In our session next week, we will explore the image streaming technique and how to use it in coaching to access possibilities not available to us in rational questioning and exploration. That session uses the work of Dr. Win Wenger, a pioneer in the fields of accelerated learning and creative problem solving. So please also join us next week to learn how to work with this beautiful and creative technique in coaching. In our previous session, we spoke in detail about the different stages of the coaching conversation. And for your convenience, I will just rapidly summarize it again. On the left-hand side of the screen, you will see the stages of the coaching conversation graphically reproduced. And right at the top, we start with the opening. The opening is that part of the conversation where we connect with our coaching client gives us the opportunity to gain rapport with them and, of course, to meet the coaching client where they are and bring them into a state where they are coachable. So you would have noticed how we started this session and there were a number of you that showed up and you might have been full of energy, you might have been very excitable. And this is typically the kind of space in which coaching clients show up as well. And it's in our benefit to slow them down. And how I slowed you down this evening is by doing a little induction, a little relaxation exercise, just to bring your mind into the presence. And some of you may remember from our previous session, as a coach, we want through hypnotic techniques, want to slow down the frequency of the brain waves to beta and then even lower to theta. And we also learned last week that that is the state or an hypnotic state is the state in which learning and growth becomes possible. So in the opening part of the coaching conversation, we want to bring the coaching client to a state where they are open to participation, to creative thinking, and of course, their own personal growth. Then we get to contracting. In contracting, we agree with our coaching client what the outcome is. And um, in our conversation, we also discussed uh, previously that this may need some negotiation um, in order to make the outcome achievable. Then we go into exploration where we really explore what the issues around the outcome is about. Any obstacles that might exist, any decisions that need to be made, etc. And this is where we do our good old-fashioned creative and divergent thinking to create as much possibility and options for our coaching clients. And then, of course, in actioning, we would then converge on the actions that the coaching client is prepared to pursue beyond the coaching session. The insights is about the coaching client sharing their own insights from the session. And in the previous session, I explained that why this is useful is because the coaching client is repeating back lessons that they've learned. And uh, last week, I spoke about the unconscious mind likes repetition and one of my great coaching teachers a man by the name of john overdurf he always used to say to us the unconscious mind likes repetition repetition and rhyme so that was a, a very catchy little saying and he repeated it back at us a number of times the unconscious mind likes repetition repetition and rhyme and where the rhyme part comes in to it because evolution has also hardwired us to notice novel things. 
because often it's the novel things that threatened our survival. So in coaching, we also want to bring our clients to a space where they can find novel experiences. And one of those novel experiences is going to be the one that I teach you tonight, but not yet. And then we get to closing, and uh, some of you may remember our conversation last week. In the closing, you want to wrap up the session, but you also want to focus on sending your client away in a good state of energy, commitment, and motivation. And um, in session one, we spent a lot of time talking about how you can create states, how you can revivify states, and how you can anchor states. So that's just a quick wrap up of the, the coaching process. Now, the timeline travel technique that I'm going to teach you this evening is one that I've used with great success with my coaching clients. And now I'm talking about people that are senior leaders. And with some of them, I actually use this technique that I'm going to teach you tonight with great results. So. I cannot say enough good things about this technique and it might come through in the conversation a little bit later. It is an effortless technique. And many of you may have already experienced this in your natural way of thinking. Human beings are very good at projecting fear into their future. So here's a scenario which some of you might recognize and others will have no clue how this ever could happen. But we start worrying about something that is going in a different direction than we want. And the next thing is our imagination start ticking over and then explodes in a flurry of creative possibility. And we start projecting worst case scenarios into the future. Now, this chain of events is typically the unconscious process through which we create fear and uncertainty. And the bad news is, especially for a group like this, the more creative we are, the more dire those future scenarios and the worse the imagined consequences. And of course, then the bigger your fearful anticipation. So creativity can also have a downside. And if you don't believe me, or if you think you are immune to what I just described to you, who has ever heard the cryptic words we have to talk from either a boss or a loved one or a previously loved one? And when you heard those words, and especially if it was the only words that you heard in that moment, how did that play out in your mind? The timeline travel technique harnesses this exact same process, but we're doing it for good. And instead of creating fear and uncertainty, we insert possibility and hope into our anticipated future. I learned this technique as part of a neurolinguistic programming training course in 2007. And it is one of the methods with the most potent outcome effects that I've experienced then and still do today. Now, the most effective place to use this in the coaching conversation is in that exploration phase. It is not a technique that I will immediately use with a new coaching client because it does require a level of trust between the client and the coach. And that trust is typically built up very effectively uh, over the duration of several sessions. James Glick is an American author and historian of science whose work has chronicled the cultural impact of modern technology. And he is recognized for his writing about complex subjects and on occasion has been called one of the great science writers of all time. In his book, Time Travel, A History, he writes, your body moves always in the present, the dividing line between the past and the future, but your mind is more free. 
it can think and is in the present, it can remember and at once is in the past. It can imagine and at once is in the future in its own choice of all of these possible futures. Your mind can travel through time. And I found this quote this morning when I was preparing for the session and I thought that explains this technique that we're going to talk about tonight so well. So although your body might be trapped in time here and now, your mind is not limited by that. And this time travel technique that we're going to be working with this evening is going to show that to you. The timeline travel process that I'm going to be teaching you tonight is something that I derived from the timeline therapy techniques, which was originally developed by Tad James. It is a simple process. If you go back to Tad James' work, you will see the processes are very similar, but I've added a couple of things to my process that hopefully will give you an interesting experience. So on the surface, it is a very simple process. What we are going to do is we're going to set a future goal or event that we want to explore. And then we will induce a light trance state. And we do that because we want our coaching client to access their unconscious resources and capabilities. It can be as simple as just doing a very simple meditative technique bringing someone to this present moment, bringing them to a state of relaxation and awareness and focus on how this moment of presence can be experienced through the senses, what you see, what you feel, what you hear. And then in the next step of the, our process, we will visualize a timeline that represents their life Depending on the kind of coaching session or the kind of outcome that the client requires from the coaching session, we may choose to go and create resources from the past. And what I will do this evening is just when we experience this exercise, I will go and find some resources in the past for each of you. And then once we've done that, we know our timeline, we know our outcome, we know our resources. Then we will travel to that moment in time in the future where this goal is going to be achieved or that this anticipated event will happen. And we will go beyond it. And we will discuss the experience of this goal just having been successfully achieved, or this event having just been successfully concluded. And then we will travel back to the present moment. And in doing that, notice consciously and unconsciously all of the actions and events and decisions that were necessary in the build-up to the successful event or goal achievement in the future. And then we'll come back to the present moment. So that's just an overview of what this process is about. In our next little exercise that we're gonna do, I am gonna ask you, and you don't have to have a clear answer immediately, but I want you to think about a goal that you want to achieve in the near future. And if I say near future, make it a couple of weeks or a couple of months away. So think about something like that, that if this goal is successfully achieved or if this event is very successful, it will give your life benefit. So start thinking about something like that. And while you're conscious and unconscious mind is pondering that, let's do something else. I'm going to ask everyone, as you are sitting right where you are, just close your eyes for a moment 
and then take your dominant hand and I want you to point towards where you feel your future is. Very important that you do it with your eyes closed. Just sense where your future is and then just, just point and maybe point it in such a way that hopefully I can see it as well. That's very interesting. And just stay with your eyes closed and just sitting there, just think about your past. And with your dominant hand, just point towards where you sense your past is. And when you're ready, you can just open your eyes and just come back to this moment. And here's the interesting thing. There's one group that would detect their future to be more or less somewhere in front of them and their past would be behind them. So that's the, the one group of people and we refer to those or as people that exist in time. A good characteristics of people in time is, is that they really do have a very intense focus about what is happening in the future. However, they tend to ignore the past to a great extent and often don't remember things well, often will confuse events in what order they happened. And if something happened in a more distant part, they will struggle in finding memories about that. The other group of people was a group that would see their entire timeline spread out in front of them. And they would typically see their past being over here somewhere or, and their future being over there somewhere. And we, we referred to that group as people that is outside of time. So they would observe if their whole life almost like a timeline in front of them. And the characteristics of those is they've got the memory of an elephant. They remember everything in sequence when it happened. They could even refer to date and times on when things were going right or wrong. Whether you are in time or outside time doesn't really matter in what we are going to do tonight. But the interesting thing is that if you are in time, you might be surprised by some of the resources that you pick up in our exercise. Are you ready to experience this little exercise? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just extend the meditative state that we started with earlier in the session. And I'm going to ask you to just, as you are sitting where you are, being supported by your chair, to sit very comfortably, preferably with both feet on the ground, and maybe even rest your hands in your lap, your right hand on your right leg, your left hand on your left leg, and just close your eyes, and just take a deep breath in, and out, and another deep breath in, and out. And while you keep breathing like that, I want you to just become aware of the big toe of your left foot. And just notice how that toe feels. And then extend your awareness to all of your other toes on your left foot. Noticing how you can notice each and every and all of your toes at the same time. And then spread that awareness to your whole left foot. Noticing 
not only your left foot, but also the sensations in that foot. Maybe there's a little tingle. Maybe there's a little warmth. And simply by focusing on your left foot, your awareness includes that foot. And while you are focusing on your left foot, just notice your right foot as well. And while you're noticing your right foot, remembering to notice your left foot, see how you can notice both your feet at the same time. And you can even feel the different sensations in each foot. And then just let that awareness travel up your legs to your knees, to your thighs, all the way. To your middle, your waist. And notice how much more you can notice by just being aware of all of your toes, both your feet, both your calves, both your knees, both your thighs, and your waist. And extend that awareness all the way up your back. Let it reach your shoulders while still keeping your attention on everything below your waist. And stretch that awareness into your belly, into your chest, into your shoulders, down your arms, to your hands, to each and all your fingers, feeling the sensations in the palms of your hands, while still feeling the sensations in both your feet at the same time. And then let wash this whole span of attention up the back of your head and down your face. And just be aware of your entire body. And while you are noticing all of the sensations in your body, just notice how it feels when you breathe in, when that air enters either in your nose or your mouth and flow into your lungs. Notice all those new sensations on top of everything else that you are aware of. That's right. And while you are in this state of attention, notice all the things that you hear. Notice all the things that you feel. And notice all the things that is visible to you in your mind's eye. And while we are in this unique moment of presence, I would like for you to just set an intention for yourself. Now, I don't know what your intention is, but I'll share mine with you. My intention is for this to be a very positive experience within which our curiosity is aroused and within which we are going to learn many new things about what the future will hold for each of us 
in terms of our goals or the events that will come up in the future. And then I want you to imagine just floating up out of your chair as high as you feel comfortable doing. And in floating up, just noticing yourself sitting in the chair that you are sitting in right now, but seen from a different perspective. And in any way that suits your imagination, I want you to imagine your timeline. A timeline that will go into the past where you've already been and the timeline in the future where we are about to go. And I don't know what your timeline looks like, but sometimes people say their timelines manifest as a footpath in nature or a highway. or even a river flowing all the way from its origin down to the sea. So find your timeline. See what metaphor comes to you. And if you don't see your timeline, just reach out with your feelings Somewhere there will be a thread of feelings leading to the past and a thread of feelings that shows the future. In whichever way it's easiest for you. And then what I want you to do is to think of a time when you were really creative and imaginative. Somewhere in the past. And as quickly as you feel comfortable with, I want you to travel on your timeline back into the past to that moment. And when you arrive at that moment right now, just notice how much creativity exists within you, how much that creativity is expressed in that moment, in the past, right now, into your imagination. And I want you to really feel that creativity, that imagination. Feel that resource within you. And as you are in this moment where you are at your most creative and most imaginative, let's imagine something else. Imagine you can take that creativity and imagination and just double that. And how would that feel? And then feeling that doubling in creativity and imagination, let's expand it 10 times. And how does that feel different from your memory? And just take a deep breath in and feel this creativity. Feel your imagination buzzing with possibility. And then as quickly or as slowly as you feel comfortable, travel forward on your timeline to this moment here today where we are right now. And just keep your eyes closed, floating above your timeline, seeing yourself in your mind's eye sitting down in the chair where you are. And then I want you to think about this goal that you want to achieve 
in the near future or this event that is going to give you so much meaning. And it might be a few weeks away. It might be a few months away. But the nice thing about time travel is we can go there as quickly as we want. And as you set your mind on this goal or event, I want you to rapidly travel into your future over your timeline to this moment in time where this goal has just happened or this event has just happened. And I want you to move 15 minutes past it and turn around and look back at this beautiful achievement, at this wonderful event and notice how it feels to be this successful. Notice how it feels to be this confident. Feel the pride in what you've just achieved. And just for a moment, relax into your success. And when you're ready, I'm going to ask you, but not yet. I'm going to ask you to move towards this present moment again. But there's something that you must do on your journey back. As you travel back from the future where you are now to this present where you will arrive soon, I want you to notice consciously and unconsciously all of the things you did all of the decisions you made, all of the relationships you built to make this event or goal such a success. So when you are ready, travel on your timeline to this moment in the present, noticing all you notice and knowing that even if you don't consciously notice it, you will notice it unconsciously. And when you get back to the present moment, now floating above your body, looking down on someone that is totally relaxed, just gently allow yourself to float down into your body Take a deep breath in and out. And when you're ready, open your eyes and come back to this present moment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.